And we back! Throughout NBA history, the center position has been one of the most stacked positions ever. NBA 75 happened this season, about 25% of the people that were inducted into that were centers! And that's not even including like Jokic, who's a two-time MVP, or Joel Embiid, who'll probably get one, or Dwight Howard, and I'm still mad about Dwight Howard getting snubbed. So in today's video, I've been simulating until we found a generational type talent at their center position. We're gonna follow his entire career and see if he lives up to the hype. And would he be a part of the next award thing, which will be NBA 100 in, in 25 years? Inspired by my good friend Bingo, who did this on Madden with generational wide receivers and generational running backs. So I'll put the link in the description. So I've been simulating for some time to get here. Every year I look at the draft class and try to determine, would this guy be generational? Probably not. Let's keep it moving. Would this guy be generational? Probably not. This was actually one of the generational type dudes. And now that he's here, I'm realizing he's 22 years old in a 94 overall. But like his overall counting stats weren't generational. I legitimately filmed 20 minutes worth of this man's career and decided to drop it because I didn't think he was going to be able to do it. Here he is in the finals. He didn't get the award. Okay. But I think the guy that's in this year's draft class is better than Fred Cox, who you just saw led his team to a finals appearance. Like, again, this guy was supposed to be the dude. But his... You know this got this, they got this one thing, and I, I'm just going to quit tangent, because a lot of y'all probably wondering why the heck I didn't keep him if he's a 94 overall at just 22. And if you play 2K, you know that this is a is not very good. This means he's 22 right now, this is the best he'll ever be. And then at 27, he starts to regress. When in my mind, if you're going to be a generational talent, you have to be like getting better and better and better. And then once you're at your peak, you have to be at your peak for a very, very long time. And a five-year peak is not good enough in my opinion. So I decided to, to move on from him. I mean, I get, maybe he'll, it'll come back to bite us. I don't know. But there's one guy in this year's draft class. He's got, I repeat, he's got an all-time great name. I, I won't try to, oh, Kawhi ended up back with the, with the Raptors. I don't know if you saw that. He's got an all-time great name. And I promise you, these are not changed by any means. It actually makes me excited that he is the generational talent. But let's see who's going to get that pick. It's going to be the 76ers. Now, we are in the year 2028. I don't know where Joel Beat is at or how good he is, you know, seven years from now, six years from now. He's still on the roster and he's got three years left. So that's not good for our generational talent, bro. He's going to be playing behind Joel Embiid. He's still 88, which is solid. Tyrese Max is the best player on the team. Yeah, they weren't very good. The number one pick in this year's draft is a guy named Robert Banks. His name is Rob Banks, y'all. All-time great. His strengths say has potential to be the next big superstar. Can block shots with the best of them. He's a 7'3 center out of Maryland, only 19 years old. And then he's an absolute monster on the glass at both ends of the court. So he should be putting up some crazy rebounding numbers, some crazy defensive numbers. But I was looking at this. He can also shoot the mid-range jump shot. He can also score in the, in the inside. But again, he's 19 years old, so that's going to come along with it. I mean, he's a plus perimeter defender at 19 years old, already at 7'3". But the defense is where he becomes generational, and he has an A-plus potential. Now, they don't have an actual um, player. Comp, but Hall of Fame is up there. I'm mad that he's going to the 76ers, though. He's going to spend, like, at least three years or two years behind Joel Embiid. Yeah, Robert Banks. Let's see what they say. Robert Banks is a once-in-a-generational physical specimen. Look at the guy Rob Mahoney telling us that. Towering high, ridiculous wingspan, no brain selection at this slot. Yeah, we back in the trust the process. It was another center draft a second. And he's 7'2". Big position, big centers are back. He's an 84 overall, and the, the, the thing that tells you if a guy's going to be really good for a long time is the amount of bads he's got. He's got 13 bads as a rookie. Nobody else in this draft class is even going to come close. Ooh, I see an 8 down there, right? Did I see an 8? Yeah. This point guard. Hey, hey, hey Benji, Benji Wells, Sir King, 5'11", eight, 8 bads. He's a scoring machine. I'm going to be on the lookout for you, Benji. Let me take, take over the 76ers. Y'all know we don't really actually do anything other than watch them. I'm like 80% sure I saw that Rob Banks... It's, it's just cool to say, Bro, Rob Banks, is he's in NBA. His secondary position was small, uh, power four. So technically, they could play together. And, and like I said, I don't control nothing, but I might control that because there's no way we draft a generational talent to tell this man he coming off the bench behind Joel Embiid and, and for the first couple seasons. Though Joel Embiid is still really good. 
I don't know if they're going to have money to spend a free agency, but I'm assuming at 34 years old, Joel Embiid, once we hit this playoff progression, he going to drop to 86 will be my, my prediction. They signed Ja Morant. They signed Ja Morant. A 28-year-old Ja Morant. Oh, it's wraps. Now, the rest of the roster sucks. Don't even look at that. Our starting small forward is Ross Cameron, who uh, got drafted this season. Like, we got two rookies who are going to be starting. They signed Ja Morant? Oh, yeah. Ja Robin Banks? There's a joke to be made there, but I'm not going to make it. Actually, the starting small forward is Troy Brown Jr. at the age of 29, so that's not great. But this looks good. Rob is wearing number 22. Joel Embiid is wearing number 21 because he's he's saying he's the success, success, successor. He's the one coming after Joel Embiid's greatness. Once you look at that, in that simulation, did Joel Embiid win a championship for Philly? He did, 2023. So he's the success, success. This team actually looks kind of solid other than the fact that Troy Brown Jr. is starting. First game, don't care about that. First game is a win by a ton. And Rob Banks almost puts up a triple-double in his first game. He's generational. Philly, the process is... That was basically a one-year process. We got a first overall pick, and we got Ja Morant, who's going to be doing this type of stuff regularly. Rob Banks had seven offensive boards. Same thing with Ja Morant, by the way. My starting point guard has seven offensive rebounds. Is he going to be a candidate to get triple-doubles all the time? I didn't even realize that his playmaking was that high. It's really not. It's, his pass accuracy is not super high, um, but his, his IQ is below average, but his vision is high. His vision is insane. He got he got a little bit of Jokic in there. I mean, in case he ain't shot the ball or got to the free throw line, but he might got a little bit of Jokic in there. I'm excited about him. Actually, don't ask me nothing about no trades. I don't want to control none of that. I do not want you to mess up my lineup because I actually built this lineup for this. You know what I'm saying? I, I want Robin, Rob, Robert, to be starting. All right, we're going to simulate this first season. And, I mean, again, they went from the first overall pick. It looked like we're going to be a playoff team. I mean, well, maybe. I, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself two weeks into the season. But maybe. They look good. We should have did a generation video about Darius Garland because um, his numbers are insane every single season. Remember, he is a 6'1 point guard. This is third MVP. And he's got four championships because the Cleveland Cavaliers core is that insane. Robin, I'm, like, I'm just going to keep calling him Robin Banks even though it's not his name. 20 points per, uh, nine and a half rebounds, six and a half assists, about two blocks and a steal. Generational. That's rookie. He's also playing with Tyrese Maxey and John Morant. That's that's the rookie numbers. I'm sure he didn't make an All NBA team as a rookie. I would be mistaken. He's generational. This is just some high school stuff. Never mind. When I when I was in high school, um. I guess this was after I left high school. I went back to my high school because there was this guy who was really good, right? And he would be at the free throw line. He was a freshman. And the student section would say, he's a freshman. They doing that for Rob Banks. He's generational whenever he's at the free throw line. Now, if I'm not mistaken, bro didn't get to the line a ton this season. He shot about 300 free throws in 82 games. That's pretty solid. They made the play -in. Not ideal. Uh, but again, this is your number one. Actually, we're not a playing team, babe. We're going against the team. Now, this is the moment. I cannot believe that Troy Brown Jr. just started on this team. This is the moment that you can let the world know who you are, Robert. You know what I'm saying? The young the young team. I can't even call them young because Tyrese Maxey and John Moran and Joel Embiid and uh, Troy Brown Jr. are all pushing 30 or 30 plus. But, like, you know how, how I'm trying to I'm trying to think of this. John, John Moran is a good example of this. John Moran led his team to the playoffs that his first playoff run he was going against the Utah Jazz. And though they didn't win, the world was on notice about the Memphis Grizzlies, dog. And I think we can do that too. Oh, we won the first game. Rob, oh yeah. Can we beat the team that has been dominating the simulation? We swept them. That's your MVP getting swept in the first round. Mitch, uh, Donovan Mitchell's still pretty good. Evan Mobley's a 95. Like, come on, man. Come on. They don't have Jared Allen no more, though. Whoa, now that's really putting the league on notice that they win the first round. And uh, this team is really good. There's no Jason Tatum, but hey, Anthony Edwards is there instead. So that's pretty solid. I, I love how quickly people switch rosters around here. Okay, let's keep it going. Can somehow we go and be the first eight seed to win a championship? Will we be the first one? I'm sure we will be. No, they're not. That's cool, though. It's, it wasn't built for us to get there. Oh, my God, this guy's still really good. Hmm. He didn't make an All-NBA team, though. Our guy Robert made an All-NBA team over him. So, 
I'm glad that we switched up on him. The Kings made it to the finals, but lost to Palo. It's Palo's team because he got finals MVP. Kevin Durant, all of our, our guys that are in the league right now that are really good at trying to retire on me. And I'm trying not to let them, but they all gone. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to go to player progression because the progression from year one is extremely important. Again, he was all NBA already, even though he was playing the four for the majority of the season. He still snuck his way into the all NBA conversations. Full time starting center is here. But you know what? We might still start them together because the secondary option, uh, da Damian uh, Gibbs, is not better than the old Joel Embiid. So we might still start them together because, I mean, we, we did we did pretty good there. Oh, my God, this guy looks ridiculous. Danny Early, we used our first, first round pick on you. You better be a stud eventually. All right, so we'll probably start both of them together. But he's in the 90 overall club at, what, 19, 20 years old? That is that is a good sign for generational. Who is the younger defensive player of the year of all time? It's got to be our guy Robin, Robert Banks. He averaged two and a half blocks of steal and a half, 24 points per game, 13 rebounds, seven and a half assists. Assist. Those numbers are insane. His shooter splits went down a little bit from year one to year two as far as field goal percentage, but he became like a league average three-point shooter, which is great. His minutes went up a ton too. The team made a lot of trades and the trades made it that Joel Embiid was coming off the bench and I was okay with that. All NBA first team at just 21 years. Oh, Dyson Daniels is really that nice. Won't you look at that? Mm -mm -mm. Hey, but Fred is here as well. Oh my God. Why did it take Fred until he was 24 to finally do it? I dropped you like, like you was a bad anime, my boy. I, like, I'm happy that you're doing better. He even had years where he shooting 40% from three. Hold on. He's actually really, really nice. Shout out to you. But you ain't never won a defensive player at the age of 21, I tell you that much. You ain't made all NBA first team at the age of 21, I tell you that much. You know what I'm saying? So we're here. And we are the fourth seed. So a, a gradual increase from last year where we were the eighth seed. And look, they actually have a small forward this season. It is William Copeland. It's Chris Copeland's little deranged cousin. Um, and they're going against Kay Cunningham and Jay Nivey. And Jay Nivey's the one and Kay Cunningham's the two. I, I don't really love it. Um, usually it, sh it should be flipped. But let's see. Detroit basketball, are y'all back? Yep. Yep, you are. Yep, you beat us in the first one. Oof. That's not a great game seven from our All-NBA first team player. But I mean, overall in the playoffs, he played great. But in that game seven, that's all people don't remember. Even if in game one, you put up 36 and 15, and in game two, you put up a 20-20 game, and in game three, you gave them 30 and 11, and in game four, you gave them 23 and 11. I, you know what I'm saying. Like, they only, they're only they only going to remember that last one, and that last one wasn't good. Eventual champions, by the way, Detroit basketball. I'm just saying, we lost to the eventual champions, so it's not that bad. It's only one explanation. He's on PEDs. Nobody's averaging 40 and 10 on 50, 40, 90. He's on PEDs. He needs to be investigated. Got a defense player of the year for my guy as well, and he's getting better when it comes to his percentages. Comes a 40% three-point shooter for the first time in his career, and he shoots 52% from the field. I mean, I don't know how he's not All-NBA first team again, and he absolutely is. And the 76ers are the one seed. And look at this. The two centers, Fred Cox and Robin Banks, they're going against each other. So this is a good old battle of the bigs. Game one is a win for our guy. Um. Okay, triple-double. Triple-double is cool. I mean, hey, Fred, Fred gave him 24, you know what I'm saying? And game two, Fred wasn't elite. Nobody else helped. Okay, I think this is a team that we beat pretty easily. I, I want to make this fake rivalry happen. It's not really that. Our team is just better. Like, if we would have been in the conference finals where the teams are easier or, like, well-balanced, then maybe. But in the first round, there was no chance. Now he's going against James Wiseman, who's an 82 overall in this universe right now. He's just not ready for... Dude. I was about to say he wasn't ready for the... For, for what our guy Robin can do. But he, he was kind of a Robin. There we go, Robin. In the game seven last year, he put up a stinker. And this week, he put up 27, 16, and four. That's huge. And now we're in the conference finals to go against the two seed Toronto Raptors, who have Zion and Scotty Barnes on the same roster. Yeah. Zion and Scotty Barnes. I want Robert guarding Zion. Let's see how good the, the DPOY is by putting him on. What seems like an unstoppable force in Zion. Your best matchup is Robert Banks. He averaged 27 points per game and seven rebounds and five assists. He's been elite, elite. Game one, they win. We got Dennis Rodman. Oh, Delano Rodman. Okay. Zion had a really solid game. Uh, game two. Okay, there's the comeback. And Rob with a triple-double. 
And I can't say he held Zion because Zion also had a great game. Listen, a guy that's average of 27 is going to get his, even if he's guarded by the defensive player of the year, apparently. 3-1 series, Zion is elite. It don't matter who's guarding him. And they're in the finals. Rob in the conference finals averages 28, 12 and a half and about nine rebounds. And he's going against the Houston Rockets, who we saw earlier in the video. They lost Jalen Green. So they're not the same. Not even They're not nearly the same team. But Jabari Smith Jr. is blasted to a 91 overall. I feel pretty good about beating them now that Jalen's not on the roster. There's game one. It's a win. Triple-double from Mr. Banks. Seven offensive rebounds is crazy. We're going to look past game two and game three, which we lost. Game four is the comeback. Game five and the championship and the finals MVP goes to Rob. Beautiful. He's already got those under his belt. The next thing is, he's got to get an MVP award. Right now, he's been a generational defender. Offensively, he's still been very good. Don't get me wrong, but generational defender. And he helped win a championship. But, like, he need that MVP award. But if he's going against Darius Garland, who's averaging 40 points and 10 assists, maybe he'll never get one. He did it. He won his MVP award, man. 26, 12 and a half, 8 assists. Almost 50, 40, 90. His free throw percent has jumped up about 10 points, um, close to 10 points in just one singular season. And he got his MVP. I don't even know what else is there to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess overall consistent greatness is, is the big dub. But he beat out Luka. He beat out Darius Garland, who this season averaged at 36 and 12 and 50, 40, 90. That's voters for Teague at his finest, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't going to lie to you. But, I mean, he's only 23 years old. I feel like I've been simulating forever, but he's only 23 years old and he's doing the things. The fact that Jokic is still all NBA third team at 31, 37 years old is crazy, but uh, he got that type of longevity. Same thing with Giannis, who has been playing in New York for the past decade or so. So that's that's different. He made an all defensive second team. Chet ended up taking the first team, but he was just better offensively this season. So like, you ain't really need him to defend like that. We got a more rounded team, I guess. I don't know. All right, can they go back to back though? The answer is. Yes. Low-key went against Freddie Cox in that uh, the conference finals, but he didn't really do nothing because he fouled out because he's guarding the MVP of the league. And now we're going against the Clippers in this round. It is Kyrie, Benedict Matherin, uh, auto-generated duo, Ben Carroll, and then Jalen Duran. Um, I like our chances in this one as well. Can we go back to back? Can we go back to back? Because greatness is being sustained, being, being good, great for a long time. And he does that. Back-to-back -back finals MVPs. This is going exactly the way I wanted it to. At this point, I'm going to stop telling people they can't retire. They're just going to do what they want to do. Now we just simulate the rest of his career and see, well, can he do more? Is he still going to be progressing would be crazy. I mean, again, he's only like 24 years old. I know we've been simulating for some time, so it feels like he's older than that. But he's only 24 years old at the moment. I do want to jump into a game, though. I should have jumped into one of the finals games for sure. But he, he say he's only 24, so he'll probably get an opportunity to get some more rings. This is not a drill. The first game of the next season, 5x5 five five game. The first one is use of Nurkic. I mean, maybe somebody else has done it in the simulation. I haven't been checking. But a 5x5 five five game is great. I'm taking a 5x5 five five game over defensive player of the year. Not really. But, like, it's so rare. It's so rare. Now, he also has seven turnovers, and they lost. But, like, it's so rare to give a 5x5 five five game. I just had to showcase that. Will they be back to being great I mean, every year they sign somebody out of free agency, and this year ended up being who? This guy, who's been jumping from organization to organization, Milwaukee, Detroit, New Orleans, New York, Atlanta, San Antonio, and now he finds himself here. It's, we just be having too many center minutes, bro. That's the only bad side to this. But, I mean, like, the Precious don't need to play, bro. Give Precious minutes a, a guard or something. Like, we have uh, this guard. He's not good enough. How about I just get those minutes to our boy? <laughs> what about that? And give Ja. Why is Ja minutes not up 40? Give him 40. This year, they made it to the conference finals and the Blues in. But he is, I think, the sole 99 overall player in all of basketball. I'm also just realizing we got the two best players in basketball. But he is the only 99 overall. So that's great. I mean, this guy, we talked about him hitting the ceiling. He has not progressed at all since we, we showed you his rookie season. I do want to watch him play. I was going, I was hoping to get back to the finals and watch the finals game, but they got eliminated in the conference finals to the Toronto Raptors, who went on to win the championship with Zion and, and Scotty Barnes. Not what this video is about, but like Shane Sharp winning defensive player of the year, something I did not expect to see here. Um, he's 30 years old. He's been averaging 20 for a long time, but it's his defense that got him out here. So shout out to him. Um, another MVP award for Mr. Banks, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for a good old championship run, sweep, and championship. Okay, 
Beautiful. One of these. Oh, and he's going against the defensive player of the year. This is great. This is perfect for everything because our guys should be there. Oh, we got Jaron Jackson Jr. on the roster now. Oh, snap. Jaron trying to get that ring. All right, I'm going to sim cast every single one of these games until we get a close one. And then we're going to jump in and see our guy Rob Banks rob the Blazers from a championship ring. Now, nah, that's... <sighs> yeah, that makes sense. I almost missed it. One minute to go. Tie game. Game two of the NBA Finals. Um, stat check is going to see... Whoa, John Moran with a huge game. Actually, Rob hasn't been on nothing. 16 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists. Loki, that stat line is pretty solid. But from the MVP to only take 8 total shots is crazy. Uh, and he's on the court, and he looks massive sitting over there in that corner right now. Again, he's a 7-3 center. I just need him to get the ball, Ja. I know you're the second best player in basketball, but you got the best. They're bringing a double team. Mr. Banks. That, that was not an MVP level move, <laughs> in my personal opinion. That looked bad. And they give up a dunk to a, to a guard. Mr. Number 16, I'm going to need a better touch from number 22, bro. That was actually atrocious. So they got Bam and Jared Allen on the roster. I'm assuming that Jared is not very good anymore. Okay, another post touch. Uh-huh. Two, two, 2K is bad. This guy is averaging almost 30 points per. Bag full. Shoot 50 plus percent. And the two possessions we just saw from him, he dribbled once and goes straight up. That's fine. That's fine. We gonna have we he gonna somehow pull out this W. Find number twenty two. There you go. Yeah, yeah. He's terrible. Oh, it went in. He's terrible though. God, it, do we have to pull the trigger one second after touching the ball every single time? All right, uh, Canada. Can Kennedy is going to the free throw line. If he hits both of these, it might be over. He's got a three point symbol next to his name. He's got a little ice in his veins. He hit the first one and the second one. Uh oh. All right, here we go. We need some speed, y'all. We need some speed. Okay, a little pick. Down the lane. 22. Okay. That's back-to-back -back buckets. That's back-to-back -back buckets. Keep playing this game. Can we deny ball on the, the best free throw shooter of all time? Because come on, man. Like, that's the guy who they're trying to get it to. And y'all not doing nothing to prevent it. Oh, my God. He's pulling for three. He almost hit it. That's game. He... Pull it from three. I like the fact that he is shooting everything, though. I feel like we could jump into another game soon, and we're going to see him dominate. That was not a very good game. It's a tie game with 16 seconds to go. I don't know who has the ball. I'm hoping it's us, obviously. It is. And he's on the court. Oh, my God. We're about to get a game winner potential. Let's go. Get the ball to number 22 and let him go to work. Give him the ball right now, Ja. Give him all the seconds he needs. Oh, Ja's going. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Screen from 22. He's diving. Ja. Get on the ball, Ja. He got it to him. He goes straight up. He misses it. He gets his own rebound. Yes. Robin Banks with a game winner in game three of the NBA Finals. He's tenacious on the glass. At least I, I think it's a game winner. 0 0.8 is enough time to get a nice shot. I'm going to be honest with you. So let's see. Comes the screen. They're sharp off the screen. He misses him. A double screen is cut. Oh, they get it to him. Okay, number 17. He's deep. He misses. And just like that, Robert Banks hits a clutch, clutch shot and takes the lead in the series. Again, not a great performance from him, but hey, he, he did it when it mattered. He was a, a steal and a block away from a 5x5 five five again. They're up 3-1, and they end up getting that championship. And John ja Morant gets finals MVP. Can't be mad. The first two games we saw, even though he did hit the game winner, it wasn't like he was out there being great. Look at all these great players trying to retire. Oh, dang. They had three people on the finals run, and they lost, and they're trying to retire. It's too many 80-plus overall players trying to do this. Okay. I feel pretty good about where he's going. I think the rest of this time, we're just going to, you know, sit back and wait for some crazy stuff to happen. So far, he's got a couple championships. He's got a couple MVPs. He's a 99 overall. He has showcased why we consider him generational. We can keep adding to the resume, right? MVPs, we've done this before. That's not, that's not the big thing. Um, defense player of the years, you've done this before. That's not the big thing. But, oh, I'm, I'm in the way. Hold on, hold on. The greatest team in the history of basketball? Yeah, add that to the list. Bro's the GOAT. Easily. Okay, I can't say easily. He's only 27, but like, let's look at the resume. At, tw at the age of 27, five MVPs, four championships, seven-time All-Star, All-NBA seven times, four defensive player of the years, and the leader of the greatest team t to ever play regular season-wise. Now, you got to get the championship, obviously. This guy's still pretty good. You got to get the championship. But, like, that's that's wraps. Now we just simulate because he's done everything. 
they almost didn't make it out of the second round. Oh my God, y'all saw that, that was dangerous. Um, so they're here to go against the Minnesota Timberwolves who have Anthony Edwards again, he's back. Then he leave for a little bit where he's back and they win in seven. Rob does it and in this game seven, he ended up putting up 25, eight and six. I mean, Ja Morant, honestly, we don't win these championships without Ja. He's been insane, he's been incredible. It's perfect that he signed to the team the day, or I guess the same offseason, as oh, Lucas trying to retire? Heck no. Um, the same offseason that we drafted him. Like, we don't do all of this without John. This might be the greatest duo of all time. Five championships in what, eight seasons or whatever? Yeah, now, now John's like 36 years old, so he's regressing and regressing and regressing. But, like, he's still 93. Uh, two years left for Rob's contract, so I don't know if he'll ever switch rosters, but I feel like they already done built the statue outside of Wells Fargo for this man. After 21 years, John Morant called it a career, man. One heck of a career. He goes down in history as one of the greatest point guards of all time, for sure. Eight-time NBA champion, and in his 21 years, he made the All-Star game 17 times. 17 times. Only made four, first team four times, six times on second team, and three times on third team, he won most of the play in real life, obviously. Never got an MVP award, but didn't need it because he got hardware. And if we go into like overall total stats, he's <laughs> he's fourth all time in scoring behind Luca, Anthony Edwards, and Darius Garland. Is Darius Garland the greatest point guard to ever play? He's gotta be. He's gotta be. He's He's got the most points in NBA history. Benedict Matherin has the most three-pointers, but Darius Garland is second. He's got the most assists. Him and Tyrese Halliburton both beat John Stockton's unbeatable record. And if John just played one more season, he would have beat it as well. What the heck? Chet is second all-time in blocks. Evan Mobley's fifth. Steals. Okay. Yeah, this is where... Okay. But, like, Darius Garland played the most minutes in NBA history, too. That's insane, bro. Oh, Giannis also retired at... 45. Kevin Durant retired at 51. No way. Okay, no, that's not real. That's not real. That's not real. That's not real. He did, he has not played in a very long time. I was about to say. Sam Cassell retires on our coaching staff. Hall of Fame inductees, of course, John Moran is there. Oh, Darius Garland is in this class. This retiring class. I mean, I mean, Anthony Edwards, Darius Garland, John Moran, that's what, three top six scores of all time. It's like the greatest, the greatest class in NBA history. And he gets his number retired, of course, after playing here for that long. So shout out to Ja, man. Shout out to Ja. It was, it was an amazing, amazing run. If you're wondering, our guy is 31 years old now. He's going into the last year of his contract. They just lost in the finals and he just lost his wingman and Ja Morant. So I'm not saying he, he's gonna leave, but I'm just saying it's possible. After 21 seasons, Robert Banks has finally called it a career. I told him two seasons ago he couldn't retire, so we can't get an extra year out of him. He is 40 years old, and he did it. Man, what a career. He is the greatest center to ever pick up a basketball, ladies and gentlemen. 12-time MVP, 9-time champion, 17-time All-NBA first team. He's got a second team, he's got 11 defensive player of the years, and he's got 18 all-star appearances in 31 seasons. And I think the last, I think two, or wait, two of them, the two, two of the years that he didn't make it was the last two because he was bad, and then his rookie season. So everything in between, he, he, he was that man. The overall counting stats, oh my God, look at all. Yeah, it's time to retire, my boy. It is time to retire. Overall, he averaged 23, 11, and 7, which don't sound too crazy, but I promise you it is. 51% from the field, 42% from three as a center, and almost retired 50, 40, 90. So close to retiring 50, 40, 90 at the center position. For his career, he was a plus 8.6, which sounds really good. I don't know what a good number would be. He almost scored 40,000 points. Like, if he had another season, he's a 40,000 point uh, scorer. And his career highs, that's something I'm curious about because I ain't look at it at all this video. 54 points, which is cool. 12 made field goals. He had 12 threes in the game, 18 free throws, 27 rebounds, and then 19 assists. It's crazy for a center, by the way. Six steals, 10 blocks, and 45 minutes. This boy was really about his stuff. And of course, he's going to be a Hall of Fame inductee because why wouldn't he be the only one of his class? Played 1,700 games. Jerry's retired. Played his entire career with the 76ers, which is dope. And now we have to see where he ended up all time. 
and points. He retires ninth all-time in points, but that is the highest amongst any center. It got KD, Book. These are all guards slash forwards. Robert Banks is the all-time leading scorer for the center position, which is great. Nicole Yoke is not too far behind, but he beats Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's great record. Three-pointers made. I don't believe he'll be listed any... Oh, my God. Freddie Cox is there. I don't think he's going to be listed, so it's, it's all good. But I was wrong. He's 12th. He's 12th all-time. Is there a center anywhere above him? Who is Lamar Rollins? Who are you? I can't even... He's number, number eight, so I'm going to assume he was a guard. So no center was even in conversations. No center. Is he Dante? I thought that said Dante DiVincenzo. Boy, I was about, Dante DiVincenzo ended up seventh. No, there's no centers here. There's no centers. I get Evan Mobley and then Chet. Okay, so Evan Mobley ended up hitting 4,000 threes in his NBA career. Rebounds, he's fourth all time behind Evan Mobley. Again, one more season, he passed Evan Mobley, but he did pass Nikola Jokic. Assists, he should be pretty high because like he continuously averaged some decent amount of assists. 15th. And Nikola Jokic is the only center above him. So based on the counter stats, he was the second greatest passing center of all time. He is the all-time leader block winner in NBA history. This is an un near unbeatable record in real life. He did it by 100 plus. In the minutes, he's got to be up there, right? Yeah, he's seventh in total minutes. What a career for my guy, man. I mean... We found the right dude. It was him. And he goes down in history. Tied for the most games played in the NBA career. Dang, he could have given us one more game. One, So he had longevity. He had MVPs. He had championships. He had counting stats. He was a part. He was the leader of the greatest team to ever play. Like, come on, man. Dang, Kaminga's just a foul machine, huh? Third all-time in triple doubles behind Luka and Jokic, but he passed Russell Westbrook, and that's it, man. The guy had one amazing career. I thought we were going to get generational, but I didn't think we was going to get GOAT. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. If you got to this point, comment Robin Banks, and I know that you watched the whole thing. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.